Thanks for inviting me. Uh, the generosity has been exchanged in extraordinary amounts of uh, white wine. So uh, my interior fits perfect with the title of this thing, sitting on the ghost of something. So I will see if I can uh, manage to uh, shake myself through this. But uh, yes, uh, as an artist, I work and also are interested in design. This could also be a title for this thing. Art is not everything, but it's design something. And design from where I am from, which is Denmark, which is five million people, approximately what there is in Cape Town. Um, it's very consensus driven. Design has been a big part of this social welfare. So this has been seeping in through all the various parts. Of course, that also makes the country a little inward looking, as one probably uh, saw with the Mohammed drawings, because one doesn't have the same tactility of what's happening on the outside. But they do know what's going on on the inside, and they would love to preserve that. Who doesn't? And uh, if I should say exactly what it is I'm doing, it says in my work, one question is, what figure are we when we are in a social relation? What does the object that surrounds us do and convey within this frame? And here you can see Denmark in the middle, and it's a very tiny little province there. So I'm happy to uh, be part of the uh, west coast of the United States. <laughs> so uh, interiors. I've done various interiors, and interiors, of course, uh, frameworks. And the designs in the frameworks helps to give art a perspective. And that's a lamp. <laughs> so I guess that one could say that my practice is very much an uh, evolutional process, where one thing uh, creates an idea, a, a body of knowledge, and this body of knowledge can then be folded into the next project. So this is just a little variety of stuff. So that's the interior we just uh, saw. I'm just going to read what it says, because the outside, which is the public space, as you can read, a tense form of stimuli constantly. And of course, we're also moving more and more towards the image. And of course, as an artist, I love the image, but as an artist, I'm also afraid of the image, because it's in such a fast way that it's being used, that all the other senses that creates memory, an idea of touch, because it is, as you know, with the eye, it's sort of... Uh, takes you away from the world. You can take a step back and look into the world. And the body puts you in the world. And the air puts you in a space. So, um, so what is a public space or a place? I was thinking maybe it's such a complex structure, so maybe it's easier to explain or to try to define what is a non-space. This is in a no town and a non-place. And a non-place, one could definitely say that it doesn't have any communication in or out. A non-place can't create a surplus in a system of change, a connection to a social system. A non-place has no economy, no language, but potentially a sound. A non-place is simply a bridge, a transition from one state to another. A non-place is an invisible but always in a relationship to the social. A non-place is a scale-free system. A non-place is only temporary. A non-place is only temporary. And then we have the space, a large 
quantity of space that uh, we also would like to call it nature. Then we create some culture in it, right? We would like to create an extension from nature into a social realm. So we need to make a wall. So therefore, architecture defines this frame. So my space is from, let's say, from here and to the other end. We have this whole space, and from there to there, that's where this thing can happen. Right now, I would say it's a quite 2D space, because you're only looking at me, and I'm seeing a dizzy, shady thing from the projector that is shining in my eyes. So, from the natural space into a social space, things are being shifted a little. But it's not something completely different. It's not like that uh, waste is uh, something that is out of order and lies in nature. It's more a shift in chemicals that moves between spaces. So one way we are cheating ourselves by saying art and design. Of course, there is a big difference between art and design in the small. I would say that design, it wants to create a solution and art would like to make an option. Or I would also say that art could be called as a model of doubt, because it doesn't need to define anything specific. It can make a stool with a hole in and one legged for the pirate. And um, we then make this space so it comes into a human domain. And in here, we can then have pieces of designs, objects that remind us who we are, and we can sit in a nice curved inwards towards the stage, so it's a wonderful tool for us to navigate in the space and set the space so we actually have a platform in where we can say something to each other. Because we are, of course, social beings. We are people of language. But maybe we are humans of form first because we start to lick and touch when we... And then we apply the language so we don't need to touch that much. And now it's much easier because now we have one tiny phone so everything we touch is just on glass. It doesn't matter if I'm running late or I'm breaking up. <laughs> so, um, so in that sense, you could say that the design is coordinating how we can define ourselves in a space. So it has a very, very important part of uh, who we are and what we would like to be. And then the art form can then be applied, or of course, it works individually next to it, and in a way, this does not to have the same functions. So in a way, this can move in and shift into the space we saw before. So architecture is creating the frame. And uh, in here, we can have a public space. And then we can see we can have the design as objects that relates to the frame of the space. And then we can have art as this little fluffy thing in the middle. And this fluffy thing can be implied into the design. We all know how design would always love to tell you the future because you want to believe in design if you would look at the Mac or something like this. It has this uh, weird idea that it knows how the world is going to turn into because it has seamless function that is pointing an arrow that way. But that, of course, is not true. So, we all understand how design can navigate and make us want to say something. We say one thing with our girlfriend in the supermarket and something else in the bedroom, hopefully. So, <laughs> in there, we can uh, resonate. It resonates. That's what it does. And um, I was thinking something because it's very complicated to say what is an object, what I'm going to say, talk about that later, because maybe we should also put it into something uh, practical. And this is an uh, angry drug addict from Copenhagen, and he is in something called the men's home, which I and another artist worked for for six years, uh, in a way to figure out how can you then uh, work as a social worker through a perspective of design. And this was many years ago. And what we try to do is to narrow down what is it actually. And this is in Danish, so I'm going to try to translate it. It says, anxiety is part of the common. So that has nothing to do with the homeless, but it's a general human thing. Anxiety is something that we often look at as something intimate, 
but it's actually a thing that is driving us. That's driving me on the stage, it's driving you to sit there and do other things afterwards. So anxiety is actually a very important social component. Then it says, where there's pressure, there's folk dance. And this we know all about, especially also in Denmark now. We have a little enclosed enclave, and of course, have you all heard, we are being pushed with this idea of identity from the hordes of people coming from the south. Your limitations is only shown in the connection with others. This we also know. We understand the, this uh, space, especially when we get a little drunk. Then this space of our limitation is uh, more and more visible. And uh, for a guy who lives a very um, liquid fight every day, it's good to have a heavy door to touch. So it's like, like a church door to get in there. And this is the camping wagon. And this is actually the camping wagon that's been taken out of it and put into a museum now. So it gets very confusing. So this was the camping wagon we made so the people could sit in and have a meeting and have a spatial reference for what they know something about, a camping wagon, something temporary. And then now it's in the museum, so it gets confusing. The public space is a friend of mine. Identity is from the forgotten mind. And I would say this is what the kind lady talked about, this social space that I would like to put into the public. And uh, we've heard a lot of these words, public space, so I was trying to also put into a new word, public spiritualism. Again, this idea about resonance, that the objects and design and the architecture in a, in a, in a united body has a way of communicating something else, because then you are moving, and information is movement. And I would like to illustrate that. Uh, let's say that uh, I put my finger here on the corner, and then I can close my eyes, and I can sort of feel that this uh, is a little warmer than uh, my own body. But as soon as I start to move the finger, then information is released. So it is a little like electricity. And this is also, in a way, to convey what is sociality, what is a social body, what is a form, how does it move. We are in it right now. Now it's uh, curved in towards me, but it's in movement because I'm saying something. And uh, this is the first project I did after the Academy, so we are in 1899. 1999. <laughs> and uh, there you have a space, and you can see how the different use, usage areas are combined, you have something outside, inside, and you have the wall that are defining in and outside, but just as a scream or a membrane. And here we have the poster, and here we have it, the same project 10 years after, and now I was going for this non-space, so I was trying to make a space in the water. This was in Copenhagen, and you can see that's the design of it. Now we're moving a little in towards architecture. We have uh, glue, which is the bar, and uh, here, I then had a range of performances, a range of way of communicating something. So now I'm just communicating one thing. The next person that comes after me is going to also talk about one thing. And when you get out, you get accumulation of all this. And this is another way of uh, giving information on. Uh, because it's about design, all of the things that are happening here. And this was about the social. Very social there. And there was a radio station, uh, a pirate radio station, that then uh, emitted what was happening through there. And then this was a little about the public uh, projects, right? And now maybe a little more for the, your success is your amnesia. That's also a little about a uh, connotation of uh, what we are as a group. And this is something I'm actually doing now. And I'm showing this compared to this because this is also what this project is about. So one time I'm saying it in a neon, another time I'm trying to say it in a realm of a school. This is a square. It's also called Your Success is Your Amnesia. 
And in the old days, when we got enlightened, the school, the transport, the post office, the law person, these institutions were important, and we also see in our capitals how beautifully ornamented they are because we needed them as a respectful way of uh, creating a democracy. And of course, many things have happened, and now it looks like certain places that you are dismantling this thing because there are so many things that would like to shout. But of course, when you come down to it, it's education, education, and education. So um, then one should think that I was going to make a school, but this is just like an artist doing a sculpture. So <laughs> I have it all in my mouth. Here is a school, and this is the square, and I'm trying to present a curved entity in between the sports department and the school. I'm putting two pavilions in, which have reference to, let's say, a monk cluster or something modernistic. And there you have various uh, environments. It has a little church-like way. There has a symbolic the oak tree for education. And then you have a scooter. You can see the wheel. So it's a scooter that is smashed up against the ceiling because there's been an accident. <laughs> and this is actually how it actually looks like now. So you can see it's very much in the process. There you go. And the scooter department, this is actually a personal anecdote because my father died two years ago. So this is an old scooter that I dismantled and then reconfigured into this little sculpture that's going to be there. And I think he would like to uh, sit there between these two things. And um, now we talk about amnesia. Then this thing is uh, from an exhibition I did in Copenhagen called Porthole. And a porthole is the little window into or out to the ocean or into the cabin of the ship. And the ship is a little uh, vessel, a little uh, piece of design that we are creating so it can float on water because that's the only way we can construct something so we can be in this infinite environment. So if one could look at that little boat as an analogy of public memory, because public memory, where is that? It's quite ironic how much wars there is because identity is driven out of our traditions, of what we've seen, what we learned. We put it into our public uh, sack of memories. It's a, 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 a fantasy, but it's a little like a currency. We use money. Uh, we use trust in the money, but we use memory to keep this currency alive, and we are getting traditions and language and values. And this door is a replica of a door for these preppers, these American people that live in the desert, and they are waiting for an ecological catastrophe or the government that's going to fall down, so they are sitting and preparing themselves, learning how to sew wounds and uh, cleaning their guns, and uh, this is, of course, a space outside the public memory. So then it looks like this, and a visitor. So this is from this show. And through the show, there was these small nuts hanging all over. And a little modernistic sculpture with a little guy say, religion is about speed. And what I mean about that is that Christian people, they had Jesus. So something already happened, so time in a way is moving outwards, right? And for Jews, they are waiting for Messiah, so in a way, the time is moving inwards. So already there, you have two ways of looking at time. And then you have a little society, and the society doesn't respect certain members of society. And that society, they cling on maybe to something like this punk band, Isis, because this is a way to release themselves. So they get out of the public memory, into their own timeline, in a way. So this is what I'm trying to say with this uh, cryptic little man. And of course, in the public space, things get converted and get distorted. So you suddenly have a giant uh, keyhole, and the keys loses their sense of reaction. You get drunk home, you open, take the keys, and you have the Rat Pack suddenly singing to you into the keyhole. So uh, it's a mess. Here is another mess. It's a Greek sign I made. It says, the hurricane hasn't passed. And there I was totally right. This is uh, four or five years ago. Who knew? Now we're going to get on to the next part of it.
This show is called One Language Traveler because I am right now breathing in air and I'm vibrating into the space and something, uh, these vibrations are meeting your ears and suddenly we have a physical connection. And we move into the world, but we move only into the world with language or we only move in with certain senses. That's why I saw him talking about this idea about how we are reducing ideas of memory regarding the way we are touching things. We're just doing like this. So this is a, like a show called One Language Traveler and you are traveling through the show. You are moving through a set of spaces and each space is uh, developing the narrative. So first we have nothing. And what defines something? That is when nothing shifts a little, then you have a news, right? So when you walk through the hall, of course your air is moving the fabric and you have something, then you have a matter. But this matter is not formulated and we would like to formulate it because there's a resonance between me and the shapes. And slowly it becomes into these shapes which I would kind of define as archaeological aesthetics. And uh, now we have a language with the shapes and form and the materials we have and now we can start to produce. So the end of the show was this factory which was called the Mountain Factory. And inside the factory you're producing stuff. And here you produce soap because soap is a vital part of us being able to be a community. And the soap has the shape of the first. And now I'm, oh, I'm back again. <laughs> the first uh, object that we made as humans. So in that sense, I would like to, in a way, create like this feedback inside the thingy. And this I'm continuing ling ling with, and this is also called One Language Traveler, the idea that we put in our intentions into forms, and how do we understand what's inside them when we see them, and is it like that I, as an artist, put a lot of effort into this square minimalistic object with liquid in it, and when I see it or touch it, it sort of gets released, this information. And then we drop it into the ocean and we find it 200 years ago in the future. And then we see these objects that is talking about how things are now. Confused? Yes. <laughs> so... Uh, this is a way of, what can we say, where is the taste? The taste is not in the apple, it's not in the meat of the apple, but it's probably in her. So the idea of the tongue and the apple is creating the taste of the apple. It's again, this, this uh, idea of, uh, this is the resonance down there. So we perceive something and then we move into something understandable. And the body is an object, it senses something, the object is there, it goes into the body, and the head sees the stuff, it moves into language to formulate understanding. Okay, uh, let's try an experiment. Um, so uh, let's see if it can work, I don't know. But let's say that it's good that I'm wireless. So let's say that um, I'm gonna say a sound, I'm gonna try to see if we can make this uh, like uh, some resonance. So I'm gonna say a sound to you guys. So everybody should say the sound, same sound as I'm saying, so your neighbor can hear it. And your neighbor should, you know, try to say the same sound. And let's, we should see if we can get that same sound, zip, all the way up. So I'm gonna sit next to you. Mm. Try to keep it the same, same, come on everybody, you can hear it. I have a microphone on, you can hear what I'm doing. Come. We have to hear the whole audience hum, right? So.
La, a little higher. <laughs> Much better. Can you hear it up there? And so it goes. <laughs> So, of course, I'm trying to say that it's neither or, but it's a little in the middle. <laughs> and this is something that we can feel when we are really depressed, right? Because there, the whole body is out of scale. This is uh, Maggie Margaret. It's a character I made in a show, and she's depressed. And you know how it is when you are depressed. You are sitting quietly around your objects, and maybe you put sunglasses on because your sensory mechanisms are a little out of order. But maybe this is a wonderful state of mind for us to communicate with our objects, which people do if they have long depressions. So she is with the objects. It's also in a way to try how can we explain what these goddamn objects we are making all the time are, ah, what is the form and the figure inside them. This is called the double ether. One could imagine the Swedish rhapsodies sound like with these two opposite asymmetric instruments. I think they, it's a very funny work, but I'm the only one here that thinks that. <laughs> so let's go on to the next one. It's a bakery. And inside the bakery, we are gathering materials, we are having some weeds, some water, some flowers, some doodly daddly, and we are mixing it together, and it becomes something third, right? It's interesting how accumulated things become something else, right? We are all by ourselves, home, it rings on the door, someone comes in, what happens? A situation. And then there's one chair, and then there's another chair, and then a third chair suddenly creates an environment. I didn't choose it. And the, the design, as I talked about earlier, is in a way creating also the piece of work. And that's the baker. <laughs> and this is just an idea of accumulation. It's all the rubbish that uh, uh, was thrown out of the other galleries, and I took them and made them into an ice cream stand. This is the cup that contains everything. It's a large green cup. And here also, this is the clutch, right? Because uh, I, I, I really like the idea of the clutch. Not the handbag, but the gear shift. How one tempo can get into another tempo, how we here, with a little tool, can exceed our own scale. Wonderful. And uh, there you saw what I'd done with the artistic things. We've spoken a little about this and that. And now we reach to the other point in where I'm taking the design five minutes out of my art and into a more conservative brand, which is this uh, Celine brand, which is this French brand that I've been working for. And it's been quite interesting because uh, when you do art and you do design inside art, art really doesn't know how to do deal with it. It's much broader, much more open in the design department. So here you can, again, slowly see all the other things I'm doing. I'm converting, I'm folding them into other uh, uses. And here, it's a fashion show. And I think there is uh, an idea of the effort uh, that they are doing.
that's the extent that's the extent we go to so now the objects are placed in a different content and of course i do believe that as i started that the artistic resonance also moves into the design objects The idea of the surface, we have a mountain, and uh, we scale down the mountain into a cup we can hold. That's why it looks like this. And then you can scale it up a little, and then it's a flower pot. Here it's two door handles, because what is the first thing you touch when you get into a building? It's door handle. So when you enter the door handle, it's a little uh, African bone-ish. And then when you've been inside the shop, you can see this minimalistic thing. They really got the best of you. And uh, we have the lamps that we saw earlier in the shows that are also being converted. And what I find interesting now is that to take all these design objects into an artistic approach. So now we are slowly landing, and uh, this is a meeting room. And here I'm slowly starting, trying to take the things inwards. And this is... Uh, Less project, it's a tower I'm building. And if each object has a specific resonance, then you take three or four various materials, you put them together into a tower. So uh, not a tower of res resonance, but still the idea of putting the ideas into the materials. And it ends all with saying art would like to do the same, but nothing specific. Right? Doesn't want to do anything specific. That's why the same is sometimes fantastic. It doesn't reach a political form. And that's going to be the last thing I'm going to say. Thank you very much.